I want to go over this operating agreement where you've leased the truck from Advantage Leasing. And that was the previous agreement. Now this operating agreement is where you're going to lease the truck on to RE Garrison. And they're going to be the carrier. Now this document is actually 31 pages, but 23 pages is your actual operating agreement. The rest are appendices and uh, forms dealing with your base plates, your insurances, things like that. We'll get into those down the road. But right now, let's start on page one of the independent contractor operating agreement for RE Garrison. Now, page one, the, the first part of it is really boilerplate stuff. It identifies you as the independent contractor. RE Garrison is the carrier, has your address on it, has, has their address on it. Um, and then it addresses the equipment under item one, equipment and services. It says independent contractor hereby leases to carrier the following, pro following property. And then it has your make, model, uh, year, and VIN number for the truck that you're leasing onto them. And now skip on down and it will talk about you're providing, you're providing the equipment to them and you're providing, you know, professional truck driving services and any other incidental transportation related services. And it goes on a little bit to describe some of those. Nothing real earth shattering here, no no real gotcha. Um, if you go on down to item two, gross compensation, uh, it says that your compensation is set forth in appendix A, and we'll get to that in another video. And there is a couple little gotchas in here. I'll just read through it real quick. It is expressly understood and agreed that independent contractors go gross compensation shall be set forth in Appendix A. Such gross compensation shall constitute the total compensation for everything furnished, provided, and done by independent contractor in connection with this agreement, including but not limited to driving of the equipment and all non-driving activities such as conducting pre and post trip inspections, waiting to load or unload, loading or unloading if required, fueling, repairing, blah, 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 blah. Independent contractor will receive 100% of the build fuel surcharge. Independent contractor as an independent contractor, not an employee, agrees that independent contractor is responsible for paying all operating expenses independent contractor is entitled to gross compensation only upon full performance of any trip offered by carrier and accepted by independent contractor. Although carriers shall use reasonable efforts to make shipments available, the independent contractor during this term, during the term of this agreement, the independent contractor acknowledges that carrier does not guarantee any specific number of shipments or amount of revenue to the independent contractor during the term of this agreement. Independent contractor may refuse any specific shipment offered by carrier. Alright, so they're telling you that you're getting paid a percentage which is outlined in appendix a and we'll get to that in another video and then you're getting 100 percent of the build fuel fuel surcharge what they're also telling you is that you do not have to take a load that is offered to you if you don't want to, you know if they offer you a load going to california you don't have to take that load you have a right to refuse it if they're sending you to new york you can you can refuse that if you think that the that the rate for that load is too low. You can refuse that load. <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> 
but what they're also telling you in the same breath is that we're not guaranteeing you any number of loads. We're not guaranteeing you that you're going to get one load or a hundred loads. We're not guaranteeing you how much money you're going to make or if you're going to make any money at all. Now, to me, that's kind of a gotcha, but that's arguable. This is a gotcha. Back in item one, where it refers to equipment and services, it says that you're leasing that described equipment onto them and that you're going to provide professional truck driver services and everything related to that. Well, here in item two, at the very end, they're saying independent contractor is free to provide vehicles not identified as equipment and professional truck driving services to other motor carriers during the term of this agreement. So they're telling you that you can work with other carriers, but you can't take this equipment and work with other carriers. And the way it's written implies that you can't drive for other carriers either. <clears throat> but again, that's, that's debatable. You know, they, they, they can... They can argue, well, we didn't intend that. But it clearly says <clears throat> in item one what the equipment is that you're putting on with them. And then it clearly says in item two that you are free to provide vehicles not identified as equipment to other motor carriers during this term. Now, item B still under section two changes in compensation now i'm not going to read this to you i'm just going to tell you what it says it says that they can change your gross compensation let's say that when you sign on they're at 75 percent, 73 percent, and with 15 day notice they can tell you well we're going to change it to 68 percent now, your options under the terms of this agreement is to, is to either accept that, sign off on the addendum to the contract, and go on about your business and take that 68%, or you can refuse to take that change in compensation, and that will immediately terminate your contract with 15 days notice they can do that. Okay? So... Come on down to item C, still under uh, item two, adjustments to compensation. Now the, now, now the gist of this, and I want you to remember this one term, rated freight bill. A rated freight bill is the same thing as a rate confirmation. So if you're working with a broker and you settle on an amount to pick up a load from point A, you're going to take it to point B, and this is the this is the rate that you're going to charge the broker for it. That's a rate confirmation. A, rate, a rated freight bill is the exact same thing, just called by a different name. Under adjustments to compensation, in this contract, you are giving them permission you're consenting to allowing them to back charge you. Um, they can either credit money to you or they can deduct money from you. Right? If they make an, a, 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 an error in billing, and let's say they bill their, their customer too much or too little. Well, on their word, and only their word. They don't have to provide you any documentation. On their word, you can be paid more money for this load that you took last week, which is highly unlikely. Or they can take money out of next week's settlement to make up for an overpayment they paid you this week. And, you know, not really anything that, that you can do about that. But one thing I wanted to point out to you is that in the contract, 
before or at settlement, carrier will provide an independent contractor with a copy of the amended rate freight bill, a rated freight bill, or a computer generated document that contains the same information, or in the case of contract carriage, any other form of documentation actually used for shipment containing the same information that would appear on a rated freight bill. Now, if this happens to you, I would, in writing, tell them I want documentation to substantiate this billing error that you claim. Not that it's going to benefit you, but it can be used as evidence against them at a future time if you ever need it and choose to exercise it. Uh, at the very least, you can use that on your on your taxes. So if they if they take money from you, now you can substantiate it with your accountant that well, yeah, they took money from me and this is why. Here's here's this. So it actually serves two purposes. But now we're getting into where they have a couple of gotchas and I want you to keep that term rated freight bill in mind because we'll get to that in just a few minutes. Item number three of their contract deals with the term of this contract and termination of this contract. This agreement shall continue in effect for a period of 30 days from the date first written above and thereafter continues continuously unless canceled by either party with 10 days written notice. Carrier may terminate this agreement immediately without prior notice in the event that independent contractor A has breached this agreement, B is in default with respect to any indebtedness of the carrier, and I think that should be to the carrier. C, has an unsatisfactory service or performance record, or excuse me, safety or service performance record. Uh, D, has furnished carrier with false or misleading information or documents, or E, has lost and is unable to obtain insurance coverage. Now, In today's world, many contracts have a definitions page. And in a definitions page, it just spells out what constitutes a breach of contract. All right. How you can be in default with respect to any indebtedness to the carrier, things like that. So it would spell all of that out because the way this is written, this is a real big gotcha because they say that it can be canceled immediately without any prior notice if you breach the contract. It doesn't say a damn thing about what constitutes a breach of contract. It also doesn't say that you can terminate the contract if they are in breach of contract. All right. And they're in breach of contract after reading this. They're in breach of contract each and every day of, of your time with them. And I'll get to why. One question I have that is also not addressed in here. If you're in default with respect to any indebtedness of the carrier. Now in the legal world. It's very well known that it's a matter of what you say, but how you say it. What you say is not nearly as important as how you say it. And now the way this is written, it could be that uh, this is saying indebtedness of the carrier, not indebtedness to the carrier. So... I'm reading this and I'm looking at it as 
I'm in default with respect to any indebtedness of the carrier. Well, I'm not responsible for any of the carrier's indebtedness. I'm not responsible for the debts created by R.E. Garrison or any of those people who work for Garrison or are in management or whatever. But the way this is written, that word of plays a big role. It doesn't say to. Now, that can work in your favor because if they try and pull this crap on you, you say, oh, no, no, no. You go back and read your contract, and your contract says indebtedness of the carrier, not to the carrier. So that can work in your favor. It gives you a very good argument, right? They also do not outline in here what constitutes an unsatisfactory safety or service performance record. Does being late one time to a delivery constitute a poor service performance? How about being early? There's no definition in here on what, what constitutes an unsatisfactory safety. Uh, they don't say, you know, what, what would be considered false or misleading information or documents regarding what? You know, uh, that's very open-ended. You know, and yes, legally, you have the right, as a lease purchase operator, you have the right to go out. You can go to OIDA, you can go to Progressive Commercial, or any insurance carrier that will provide you coverage. And you can get the insurance coverages through those outside, those third parties, if you want. There's really not a damn thing Garrison can do about it. You know, you had to provide them with copies, proof of insurance. And, you know, there's some things you may have to list them or advantage leasing as additional insured, things like that. But you don't have to buy their insurance and, and you don't have to allow them to deduct from your payroll every single week. Because what you're doing is you're just giving them one more revenue stream. Because they're marking all of this stuff up and they're tacking administrative fees on it. And it says so in the contract. And I'll get to that later on. But it clearly says in the contract that they can mark it up and they can tack on administrative fees. So if they're not doing it, why would they put that there? But so this is the first gotcha, so to speak. Uh, and it's very vague, my opinion. And again, you know, have your own attorney read this stuff over and explain it to you. But my opinion, if you took Garrison to court and sued them, uh, odds are very good that you would walk away winning because there, 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 there's a lot of ambiguity in in this contract there's a lot of things that lack clarity and honestly i don't know that that any court would actually uphold any part of these contracts because the way this is written this is a very one-sided contract it gives them all the rights. It doesn't give you any right. You know, you don't have a right to terminate this contract without notice, but they do. And well, there's some things that I'd like to say, but I probably shouldn't say. But let's just say that you would stand a better than 50% chance of winning if you decided to sue them under their own contract. But now, this is <clears throat> this is a pretty good size gotcha here on page four, item number four, settlement period. It tells you that within 15 days after you turn in all of your paperwork for each load, that they will, they will pay you but you need to provide them with all the applicable documentation and such. 
And it also says, Carrier shall settle with the independent contractor with respect to services provided under this agreement within 15 days after the independent contractor has submitted in proper form completed driver logs as required by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Well, they got the ELD, so that's really a, a non-issue. Any other documents needed by carrier to secure payment from carrier's customer applicable to any trip performed pursuant to the terms of this lease agreement, including but not limited to the signed freight bill, delivery receipt or bill of lading. Independent contractor further agrees to provide to carrier, but not as a condition of settlement and payment. Any vehicle inspection reports, trip sheets, pickup and delivery records, blah, blah, blah. The carrier will give independent contractor before or at the time of settlement a copy of the rated freight bill or computer generated document containing the same information or in case of ship contract shipments, any other form of documentation actually used for shipping containing the same information. So what they're telling you is that for every load you take for them, they are supposed to give you a rated freight bill, which is the same thing as a rate confirmation. Now what should be contained in a rate confirmation is the, the amount of money that RE Garrison is charging that customer to haul that load. And then you take your percentage of that. So if it's $3,000 and you're getting 70%, well, then you do the math, you know, 70% of $3,000 plus, plus whatever the build fuel surcharge amount is. And you can go to the Department of Energy's website every single week. That, that rate changes. And it tells you on there how you can calculate the fuel surcharge yourself. I tell you from my own experience, RE Garrison's fuel surcharge numbers never match that of the Department of Energy's. So go to the Department of Energy's website, learn about how the fuel surcharge is calculated, do the math, and do it for every single load. Because even if you choose not to pursue legal action against uh, Garrison for shorting you on that, at the very least, you can expense that out on your taxes, most likely. Talk to your accountant. Because this is what you should be getting. This is what you got. And so you're actually entitled to this full amount. Uh, because it says in their contract, you get 100% of the build fuel surcharge. Well, they need to document what are they billing on that fuel surcharge. You're entitled to that information. All right. All right. I'm going to stop on this, and in the next video, we'll pick up at item five, which is dealing with chargebacks, and we'll move forward from there, okay? So you guys be safe. Take care. I'll see you next time.